Welcome to the Armchair Coaching Podcast. My name is Coach Sheffer. I am your host today. I am the offensive line coach at Brentsville District High School in Knoxville, Virginia. And today we have another great guest. But first, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, do us a favor, hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. We are trying to grow our community here on the podcast, and that would help us very much. Also, if you're interested in listening to this on the podcast form, we are found on multiple podcast platforms, including Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, as well as many others. So today we have another great uh, guest tonight, and I'm going to introduce him real quick. He played his high school football at Madison County in Virginia, and then he played a little bit of college ball at Bridgewater College, which is also my alma mater, uh, which I just found out right before we started recording, which is pretty sweet. Um, and then you taught and coached at Madison for four years, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Yep. Awesome. He taught and coached at Madison County, his alma mater, for four years. And then if you're from Virginia, you've probably heard of this school. He, he uh, went over to Eastern View High School in uh, – oh, crap. What county is that? That's Culpeper, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. In Culpeper County. So if you're from the Northern Virginia area, that area, you'll know who they are. Um, and he was the, while he was there, he was the run game coordinator – the JV offensive coordinator and the recruiting coordinator. And this spring was hired as the head coach for Madison County. Uh, please help me welcome in coach Larry Helmick. Uh, thank you for coming into the podcast today. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump in. The first question I have for you is one that I ask everybody. Um, I'm always fascinated by everybody's coaching story. As a coach, we all pretty much have our own kind of unique story and how, how we got to where we are. Um, so could you go ahead and describe to the listeners your coaching journey? How did you end up where you are now? Yes, sir. Uh, so, I mean, like the rest of you, I played my whole life, you know, coming up Little League all the way through. Um, when I got into high school, I played offense and defensive line all the way through my junior year, very first day of full pads, early morning practice, I broke my femur. Um, I was able to bounce back from it and played my senior year. And then I played my freshman year at Bridgewater, but I was, I just wasn't the same player that I was before I broke it. Um, when I, once I broke it, I knew that I wanted to continue to be on the football field and be incorporated with football, but getting to Bridgewater, just knowing I wasn't the same player that I was. Um, I decided to step away from the game, but I knew I wanted to come back and be around it somehow, some way. And I graduated from Bridgewater and ended up going back home and coaching with my high school coach, Stuart Dean, for four years. Um, while I was at Madison, I coached the, I was JV, a freshman head coach, and also the offensive line coach for varsity. So I did that for four years, and then I went up and joined Hatfield at Eastern View, and uh, we had we had some really good runs. Um, uh, three years in a row, we were undefeated, ten and zero in the regular season. Twenty eighteen, we were Region B champions and made it to the Final Four before losing to Lake Taylor. And um, Hatfield is a tremendous coach, and I learned a lot of great things from him. Um, a lot of things I'm going to bring with me. But um, it, it was, dude, it was a fun ride, man. It was, yeah, we had a great staff, great kids. I had a lot of roles there. Um, run game coordinator on, on varsity, JV offense coordinator, uh, recruiting coordinator, um, offensive line coach. So we did a lot of things for Hatfield. We, we, we bonded together. We got a really nice, great relationship now. We talk every day and um, – I'm going to miss those guys. I know they're going to do well and do big things, but I'm happy to be back home and coaching at my alma mater and hopefully bring things back. Um, Madison was a powerhouse back in the day. I mean, Madison County was a football school, and we just need to get it back there. I can do it with community support, and we got a good thing so far, I feel like, and got a good group of people around me, good staff, good community um, camaraderie right now. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the future holds. All right. So honestly, 
this it's it sounds so weird that I and I'm saying this, but you and I our our kind of path was very similar. Uh, I had a, a pretty severe injury my senior year of high school, first day of full pads practice. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, tore my ACL and then I tried to come back because the doctor slapped a brace on it, said you're good to go. Um, second game back, I did something. I I twisted the knee one way and it just everything went and I had a bunch of cartilage damage. Never I haven't been the same player since. Um, I tried to play at Bridgewater. Uh, so we are uh, we do share an alma mater. Uh, go Eagles. Um, oh yeah, man. I tried to play and it just never quite worked out. You know, I made it to my sophomore year and then I started. They had a great practice. year last year. Yes, they did. Um, and I'm, I tried to watch some of their games on TV, I, you know, cause I'm coaching and teaching. I wasn't able to actually go to see any games this this past year, but. Man, I, I, went to, I was able to go watch them play Macon. It was a great game. Yeah. My, uh, the, the current guy that I work for as a head coach, he was a Macon grad. So, okay. uh, I kind of, I use that as a jab, you know. Is it is it Mullinex? Is that Mullinex? Yep. Yeah. Joe Mullinex. Yeah, he's a great guy, though. I I don't hold the making against him too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we played against you guys a little bit when I was at Eastern View. Yeah, um, the, my first year was the last year that we actually played you guys, um, which yeah. was 2018. Yeah. So that was the last year that we actually played you, um, and you guys beat us thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's why I kind of remember, I, I, I actually, my first coaching job was at Fauquier high school. You probably know Fauquier. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we played against you guys and y'all beat us thoroughly while I was there too. So I've never actually beaten an Easter moon team. So they're definitely yeah. one of those, like everyone in our area knows you guys. So <laughs> that's why I kind of mentioned it. Um, I got off a little track there. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, I, I also spent a little bit of time as like a freshman head coach at, uh, you may have heard of Garfield Senior High School in Woodbridge. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I spent some time there. Uh, so very similar path for, for the both of us, which is kind of interesting. Um, and, you know, I, I reached out to you because uh, you're a local guy. And um, I actually, I haven't met you yet. Not that I know of. I'm, you know, we might have past each other somewhere uh, yeah. I haven't met you yet but I wanted to reach out to some local guys and you seem like the perfect candidate and so I appreciate you coming on tonight yeah I appreciate you man I, I really do um so the next question I've been diving into a lot of like culture and leadership stuff over the off season um how would you describe your own personal leadership style um I'm really big on relationships. So I try to build a relationship and get to know each each and every single one of my players, no matter where they are on the depth chart, where they are in life. Because if I can build a relationship with, with these kids and, you know, maybe I have gone through some of the struggles they may have or where I can relate in some sort of way, if you can build those relationships, you're more likely to get um, get kids to buy in or – to um, to grasp your leadership and look at you as the leader and as a positive influence on their life. So I really, really build and harp on the fact that I'm building relationships with, with not only my players, but my coaches and, you know, getting the, getting to know one another and creating a family bond. And, and, and once, once you have that, I feel like you, you're able to, you know, show and represent your leadership and, lead by example i mean one thing i've learned at eastern view is never to be outworked um i mean we we worked we really worked i mean we always said that we were never going to be beaten because we were the least prepared team so we went in every week to be more prepared than the other team so if you if you beat us it was for good reason you know and and that stuck with me i nobody's gonna outwork us uh I, I'm a firm believer of that. Um, I mean, I started out conditioning with six kids uh, a month or two ago, and I'm up to 25. And it didn't matter if I had six kids or three kids. You know, I I was going to be there every day, and they were they knew I was going to be there every day. So, so for me, building relationships, and once you build those relationships, you can lead however you want. Um, 
I'm, a, I'm very big on building up. Um, I don't want to tear people down. Sometimes you have to, but if you're building them up, it's easier to tear them down and bring them back. You know what I mean? So if you have those relationships, you, you can do that. But it's very important to have them and very important to lead, lead by example. You know, I don't want to be at work. I don't want the kids to be at work. So if, I, I, I got to prove to them that I'm willing to put in the work there. That way they can grasp that and put it in as well. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I'm very much relationship based. I'm, I'm not the, I told the coach in our interview, I said, look, you're not going to be able to rely on me to give pregame speeches. <laughs> you know, I'm not that type of coach. I'm the type of coach. I'm on the sideline with my arm around their shoulder, you know, talking to them, you know, calm. There are yeah. times when I get excited and I'll yell, but if I'm yelling, there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm definitely more of the calmer, you know, relationship based coach. Um, speaking of coaches, who are some people in your life who have had a large influence on who you are today, whether or not they're a coach? Um, I'm going to start with coaches that have kind of molded me or shaped me into the coach that I am today. I played for the legendary Eddie Dean. Um, he's a Hall of Fame coach in the state of Virginia. He's got over 300 wins. Um, he coached at Madison for over 40 years. Um, great man, great coach. Uh, I can't say enough about him. So I feel like he's helped mold me um, and definitely as a player, but also into the coach I am now. Um, Stuart Dean, his son, was my head coach his, my senior year. And then um, I coached underneath the Stuart for my first four years. And I mean, he's had a huge impact and role. I mean, I've learned a lot of things from him over the years. And then obviously, Coach Hatfield, like, great man I've learned so much from Hat and um, I think the biggest thing I've learned from him is that uh, high school football or football in general I think is very very little about X's and O's and a lot more about um, relationships and and forming a tight knit bond community family feeling within a team and man once you have that um, you just everybody runs with it. And that's, that's something that stuck with me. And I learned from coach hat. I, I think, uh, I think Hatfield will definitely be in the hall of fame one day. All he's got to do is get that one ring. And I mean, he's, he's a phenomenal coach. He really is. And learned a lot from him, but those three guys, man, as coaches, they're, they're great. They've been great people to learn from and, and just, you know, just be a part of my life. So, I thank them for that. But um, off the field, my father, he's a great man, um, just a hardworking guy. and He always provided for our family and did everything he could. Um, he, but he loved like no other also, you know what I mean? I, I come from a divorced family and stuff, and, you know, he was there to get us all the time and wanted us all the time. And then uh, I ended up moving with him, uh, moving in with him, in middle school and I, I lived with him throughout the till I you know was an adult and but he's just he's a go-getter himself um he works at the local lumber yard and been doing it for 30 some years and he's just he gets up and goes every morning you know he's a great guy sorry I was muted oh, okay I was wondering <laughs> I was like, man what did I do no it wasn't you it was uh you know, some I'm still learning this whole Zoom thing, man. You know, this yeah, virtual, I tell you, virtual teaching is a. Uh, uh, I told you right before the podcast, it's a kick in the pants. It um, is. It it's, is. It's not fun. Um, you know, it, it might be the safest thing right now, but it's 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 not not what I like to do. Another fun fact that I'm for some reason just thought of is you coach and no. Uh, coach and teach in Noakesville at Brentsville mm -hmm. my little baby brother well not he's not the baby brother but my little brother teaches and coaches at Patriot High School he is a he's a wrestling coach he's not a football coach but <laughs> I thought that's kind of it's kind of funny that he's right across the street well it's it's, it's a small world when you get <laughs> yeah. to our area yeah um so we like to talk on this podcast a lot about college and NFL um do you have any college or NFL teams that you root for? Are there any teams that you try to watch every week? I've always been a 
hard Virginia Tech fan. Um, love the Hokies. Uh, I just grew up loving them. I mean, I mean, I, I obviously I love UVA. I love ODU. I love all the state schools and root for them when they're on. But growing up and stuff, I mean, I was I was a Vic fan. Michael Vick, I mean, I had his jersey. Like, I love the Hokies. I've been to several games. I mean, it's just always been something that I've I've harped on. Um, professionally, I've always liked Detroit. Um, I don't know what it was. We are not very good, but always always liked them. Yeah, NFL is weird. Um, <laughs> I. I only root for the Washington team, yeah. whatever their nicknames are nowadays, because my wife's family is a Washington fa family, uh, and I would have been kicked out <laughs> if I wasn't rooting for them. Um, I, I mean, I like them because I consider them our home team, you know, but I don't know, Detroit, man. Yeah, I like other teams in the NFL, but I, I'm more, I'm much more of a college fan than an NFL fan, and so – because of that, I fought, instead of following an NFL team, I follow certain players. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm like, I really hope that guy does well because he went, you know, he went to a school that I liked and stuff like that. So, yeah, for sure. That's more how I am. But now, now that I play fantasy football, I've only been yeah. doing it for a couple of years. Now I actually sit down and watch the games. So <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> uh, awesome. I, I'm too competitive, uh, and so, <laughs> and so the guys who got me hooked on fantasy football, they didn't do me a service. <laughs> I'm, I'm too competitive. It takes up too much of my time. Um, so we kind of, when we were talking on Twitter, um, we, I was asking, you know, a little bit about your X's and O's and I know you just got to uh, Madison County. So you really haven't had much time to install anything. You might've installed some stuff, but you mentioned that you are more, um, you, you're not really relying on any system or any X's and O's. You're trying to um, tailor your offense to what your players can do, right? Yeah, so I'm a firm believer at this level. Um, it all depends on your personnel. You can't go out and recruit the guys you want for the system that you want. It's just not how it works in high school football. So to me, you got to evaluate the guys you have and you have a lot of athletes then you need to spread it out and sling it around and get in the open field um a lot of speed and a lot of agility if you just have tough athletes you know then you need to put it in between the tackles and slow it down and three yards in a cloud of dust so it all to me it all depends on what you have um available and ready and that's going to determine at this level what you can run um I think that's how you, you'd be most successful at our level. Um, uh, who's to say I'm right or wrong? I don't know. But that's just how I feel in my opinions of it. I would say right now um, I have a good idea of what I want to run, but I'm not going to say anything because I don't know if it's set in stone. And uh, we, we still have to see. You know, I'm, we're, what, four months out. And uh, – I mean, I, I have a good group of kids that I love right now, and they're they're working like heck for me. I mean, and that's that's all I can ask for, especially after taking over a program that's, you know, kind of been struggling. But I'm excited for what the future holds, and we'll see February. We'll see what uh what we can we can run with. Yeah, I'm I kind of agree with that, you know, and because I've met some people who are. I run this scheme and my players will fit this scheme or, you know, I think these players are be good for this and they just keep flip flopping or they don't, they won't do. Um, for example, there's a team in our district. I'm not going to say who, uh, because I don't want anybody coming back on me, but no, uh, there's a, there's a team in our district and we've discussed this in our uh, coaches meeting. They had, Besides our quarterback, which we have a pretty darn good quarterback in our league, in our district, they had probably the best quarterback besides ours on the team last year, and he's going to be a senior, but they've just got a brand new head coach, and this guy's a single wing coach. And unfortunately, this kid is not what you would picture as a single wing player. 
as yeah. a quarterback. And so we're all just like, well, how are they going to use him, right? Are they going to throw the ball or not? And he's basically came out and said, nope, we're running single wing. Um, and he's had success at other schools, but that that's one of those times I'm like, yeah, you might want to – you're going to waste that guy, right? He's a really good player, but I don't know. I don't agree with those coaches. So, oh, well. Yeah. I guess, it's, I guess it's more opinion-based, but – yeah, yeah. Um, the next question, I know you just got to Madison County, so you you may or may not have been dealing with this, but let's say you're looking to hire new coaches. What is something that you're looking for in those coaches that you're, you're interviewing? Um, for me, a lot of it has to do with, again, I know I've said it a million times tonight, relationships. If I – if I can find a guy that I feel like can can relate and build relationships with these kids, then that's the kind of guy I want. Um, it's very hard for for athletes or kids these days to uh, buy in or believe in a coach or be coachable. And um, if a if a coach doesn't take the time to get to know a kid, why is he going to listen to him or hear what he has to say and in regards to coaching, you know, and, and not, not every kid's the same. I'm not saying that, but there's, there's many of kids out there that if you don't have a relationship, they're not going to be coachable. They're not going to be. So that, that's very, very important to me. If you look at my staff, I have 11 guys right now. And um, majority of them, majority of them are in our school system. They're either in the high school or the middle school. And I'm huge on that because they're, not only do they know the game of football, so they either played it, coached it, or both, or been around it, but they're in these buildings building those relationships. They're seeing it, well, in a normal year, they're seeing these kids every day and building those relationships and building those bonds, and, and that's huge for me. And then, obviously, they need to know scheme. They need to know positions, and st- that's a given to me. But if I if I know that a coach, if I can – pick up on a coach and know that he's willing to put in the commitment and get to know these kids then you know he's he's the one I want so that's what I went after all right uh and then the last question that I have for you it's pretty simple one it's why Madison County what makes it the right place for you man that's that's easy for me um it's home man I played here I remember sixth and seventh grade going to games and just barely underneath the the top of the fence and you you like looking under and I mean back then they'd come out and they'd just dominate and I just remember that place would be packed you know our our home field is kind of like in a bowl you know it's it's got hills all around it we're kind of tucked in there and it's it used to be full everywhere I mean there'd be people sitting in the stands people sitting on the hill and I always knew honestly in my heart like I I will I will totally admit I loved going to Eastern View I loved learning I loved coaching those guys loved everything about them um but the opportunity to come back to your hometown to be a head coach is you know kind of one in a million and I'm happy to be where I am and I'm excited for the future and uh, I mean I'm home man that's that's all there is to it. It's pretty cool. Hey, that makes a lot of sense. I, I definitely understand that. Um, I'm not sure if I personally would want to go back home. Uh, I'm I'm from a different area, but, uh, you know, those people are crazy. I don't know if I want to go back there. <laughs> but, um, you know, last the last thing I'll ask you, and I won't uh, take up too much of, more of your time tonight, uh, final thought, um, there's a lot of coaches like us who aren't coaching right now you know, in like an official, you know, at practice and getting ready for a game capacity. Um, And so, you know, there's, there are some positives, like we are now starting to do some on the field work finally. um, And they're starting to relieve some of the restrictions, but there's a lot of other, other guys who are having a hard time finding the positives in this situation. Do you have any uh, words of wisdom that you would tell those particular guys? like we were talking before we went on and I mean this this pandemic is is not an ideal situation by any means um 
but I've tried to bring out the positives in and, you know, I'm taking over a new program. So I'm, I'm looking at it as, you know, I'm getting a little more time to get to know these kids and get them ready for the season. Um, so I guess the only thing I could tell them is to please do not harp on the negative side of this because that's all we see right now. Try to find something positive, like um, me pulling out, you know, the positive aspect that we got a little more time to prepare. Um, you know, that's what's helping us go on and, and fight the fight. I mean, people need to realize they're not the only ones dealing with this. We're all in this together. But I, I'm with you, man. I, I'm so happy to be back on the field. We've been back about a month and a half or something like that, maybe a little longer. As soon as VHSL cut us loose, we, you know, we, we got our uh, mitigation plan together and we rolled with it. And now we're finally allowed in the weight room and stuff. So it's been, been a fun time, man. I'm excited. Um, but yeah, just try to find something positive about it. Please don't dwell on and harp on the negative aspects of it because you can do that with anything and it'll bring you down. So try to find some good out of this somehow and, uh, roll with it. All right, coach. Thank you again for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. This has been the armchair coaching podcast, and this is coach Sheffer signing off.